Hi guys, welcome to the last video in my series going through June 2014's Unit 2 Biology paper. This is question 9. The last paper on a Unit 2 is usually always a how science works an experimental design question asking you to look at a study and pick it to bits. Um, so let's have a look. This one's about nicotine. Um, and what, what nicotine does, essentially. So we're going to read through this section of text and pick out key bits. So nicotine is the addictive substance in tobacco. When nicotine reaches the brain, it binds to a specific protein. This causes the release of chemicals that give a feeling of reward to the smoker. This reward is part of the reason why people find it difficult to stop smoking. Scientists have developed a vaccine against nicotine to help people stop smoking. They set up an investigation which involved a large number of volunteers once a month for five months. One group of volunteers was given the vaccine, the other group was given a placebo. Uh, at regular intervals, the scientists measured the concentration of antibodies to nicotine in the blood of each group of volunteers. They also calculated the percentage of volunteers who had stopped smoking from months two to six. Right, in this investigation, it's a double-blind trial, it says here. So that means neither the volunteers nor the scientists knew which group they were in. Uh, sorry, which person was getting vaccines or placebos. Why? Well, firstly, um, it avoids bias. So that's bias on behalf of the scientist. Um, avoids experimenter bias. Just in case, you know, they have a friend who they really care about and they want them to stop smoking. Um and they would put them in maybe the, the actual trial group rather than the control group uh, scientist. So it avoids bias from the scientist. Um, uh, and from the volunteer side of things, um, it basically means that they can't show uh, the placebo effect. Okay, So it avoids or minimizes the placebo effect. Or allows us to, to negate any effect. So we know that we're looking for different responses between a placebo group and the actual trial group. So what else have we got here? The scientists measured the concentration of nicotine in the blood of two volunteers who smoked the same number of cigarettes per day. Suggest two reasons why the concentration of nicotine in the blood of these smokers might be different. This is always a question on a paper. Um, uh, suggest why it might be different. It's usually... Um, to do with little daft things that you can you can change around. So, um, so different cigarettes might have different amounts of nicotine. So it might be the amount of nicotine in the cigarettes. Of nicotine in cigarettes. You know, you could also even even go as far as saying that they might inhale different amounts of cigarettes or different amounts of cigarette smoke, or it might have been different amounts of time since their last cigarette. Um, let's have a little look. See. So let's go for a different one as well. Uh, let's go for that one. Um, time since last cigarette. So if they had a cigarette five minutes ago, their nicotine level is going to be elevated. If it was two hours ago, they're going to be quite low. So time since last cigarette. There we are. Okay. Other exam answers that you could have, you know, you could talk about uh, passive smoking. You could talk about uh, some of the nicotine being uh, excreted somehow. Um, and that's pretty much it. So suggest how this vaccine could help people to stop smoking. Right. The idea is the antibodies are going to target the nicotine. And they're going to stop it binding, and you're not going to get the reward. So antibodies they're going to bind to nicotine. The idea is the vaccine helps you produce these antibodies more quickly in the future. So they bind to the nicotine in the bloodstream, wherever it may be, um, and they stop it binding and stop it reaching the brain. So it stops it binding to the receptors 
And if it's not binding, you're not going to get that same reward sensation. So no reward. And if you're not getting the reward, you might stop smoking. Because what's the point if you're not feeling that nice, uh, relaxed feeling that if you're a smoker, you'll know. I'm not a smoker. Smoking's bad. You just get that in there. Um, question 9b, part 2. Some people have suggested that the National Health Service should not be given free to smokers. Sorry. <laughs> Some people have suggested that this vac the vaccine should not be given free to smokers on the National Health Service. Evaluate this suggestion. Um, well, going through, let's let's disagree it. Let's disagree first. So, against. So our disagreeing points. It's not really ethical, is it? You can't just choose not to treat people because of a lifestyle choice that they've made. Um, so that's that, that's terrible. Also, these people have been paying taxes all of their lives that help run the NHS. So why shouldn't they have some treatment? Okay. So there we go. Taxes paid. Entitled to treatment. It's not really a biology question. It's a politics question. Um, so let's go with agreeing. Let's have a little look at it. Uh, what else have we got? Um, so people who are agreeing with that suggestion. Uh, let's ch let's change the, the wording of this. Let's put this one as agree. It's a little bit more straightforward that way. And let's put this one as disagree. There we are. Uh, so people who agree with the idea that it shouldn't be given to smokers, um, basically the, the money would be better spent elsewhere. Money better spent elsewhere. On education or letting people know how dangerous smoking is. So on educating about smoke and smoking and how it's bad for you. Also, you could agree that if you know, if you are a smoker, you know the risk. Okay, people chose to smoke. Um, uh, smokers know the risks. They know that they're likely to get all sorts of horrid diseases. So why should the NHS um, pay for vaccines? So a tricky question, that. More about politics than about science, but uh, thanks AQA, making it nice and challenging for us. So let's have a look. More science now. Scientists measured the concentration of antibodies to nicotine in the blood of volunteers for 12 months after the first vaccination. As a result of these measurements, they divided the volunteers into three groups, high responders, medium responders, low responders. And figure six shows their results. That's this mighty looking table, uh, graph right here. Uh, the scientists also recorded the number of volunteers who had stopped smoking from months two to six of the investigation, and that's in table eight, which is down here. So let's have a little look-see. So let's do this all pretty and nice. So our high antibody responders, they peak and then they drop, but they don't drop too low. Uh, our medium antibody responders, they peak and then they go down steadily. Our, uh, our low antibody responders, they go up and they come down. And our control group, uh, well, they do nothing. Okay, so what else have we got here? Uh, in our high antibody responders, high percentage stopped, less stopped, oops, that should be, we'll keep the colour code the same, uh, there we go, so basically, you know, the higher your antibody response, the more likely you are to stop smoking between months two and six. Okay, a journalist reported that this vaccine is a major breakthrough. Um, that's not like journalists at all, overstating the truth. Um, a major breakthrough in helping people to stop smoking. Do these data support this statement? Explain your answer. Five marks. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's have a look. So, pick things out. Uh, what have we got? Information, 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 information. Got to go all the way back here. Right. 
I'm going to start high underlining stuff. We've got a large number of volunteers, okay? So that means reliable data, so we like that, okay? So large sample size means reliable data, and we like that. One mark. It's also a double-blind trial, which makes, makes it doubly reliable, really. Okay? Uh, let's have a little look-see. Um, what else are we going to go for? Just because these high antibody responders showed really, really good results, doesn't mean it doesn't even. There's no information about how many people were high antibody responders. So, not many. Maybe high responders, high antibody producers. So we don't know the distribution of people within those groups. Okay, what else have we got? Um, you could argue, is you know this data here and even this data here, is that really a significant difference? So quite a few people in that placebo group stop smoking. However, it's quite similar to the low antibody responders. So, 30, how many percent? 31.3% of placebo groups stop smoking. And this is similar or close to the low and medium responders. Sorry about my handwriting. Uh, what else have we got? Um, other things, we don't know what happens after six months. We've got no data for that. This is only between months two and six. So people may start smoking after six months. Again, after six months. Other things, you know, is is nicotine the only reason why people smoke? So there might be something else. Um, nicotine isn't the only reason for smoking. You might want to appear cool or you might do it because your friends do it or you might be a social smoker. There we are. And that is pretty much it. Uh, anything else we can add in? Let's have a little look-see. You could also say the antibody levels drop after after five months. So you might need boosters and things like that. So antibodies. Antibody levels drop after six months. And that will do. So I really hope you've enjoyed this series of videos. Um, this will be the last one before the exam on uh, on Monday. So I might do one or two more little videos, but this is certainly the last exam technique video. So there's 15 out of 15. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.